I want to talk about the U.S.-backed anti-government protests here in Thailand, but also in Hong Kong and Belarus. I want to talk about how they're linked together and how even today we still have people trying to push the narrative that these are all pro-democracy movements and not just U.S. interference hiding behind democracy. And I want to talk about a Thai student leader in particular, Netowit, and I'm sure that my Thai viewers and readers are familiar with who he is. He's a very anti-Chinese student activist, if you want to call him that. And he has been kind of involved in the background of the current protests. You won't see him on the stage leading the protests from the front. But what I think will happen is once this round of protests kind of, kind of fades out, he will be part of the next round that's sure to follow. So it's good to get ahead of the curve and show people who Netowit really is what his motivations really are and who he's really working with. And I think once you see that, you're going to understand why I thought it was important to, to shine the spotlight on him again. And this is a opinion piece he wrote Christmas 2020. Spare a thought for Joshua, Ag Agnes, and Ivan this Christmas and show them solidarity. And he's talking about three leaders of the Hong Kong mobs who are now in jail and, and face more jail for carrying out sedition, U.S. funded sedition in, in Hong Kong against China. And he complains about this. He claims that they were participating in pro-democracy protests. He calls the Chinese legal system draconian. And then he says, despite the security laws and despite the crackdown on pro-democracy leaders in Hong Kong, we still see their cause being taken up in the rest of the world. And he talks about Belarus and Thailand. So Belarus and Thailand, Hong Kong, and claiming that this is all pro-democracy. Democracy is a process of self-determination. So if your pro-democracy movement depends on U.S. government money or is being directed by the U.S. government or supported mainly by the U.S. government, you're not a pro-democracy movement. What you do is not being determined by you or the people you claim you represent. Your movement is being determined by the people who fund and direct it, which are people who live overseas in another country, the United States of America. And so here is Joshua Wong in Washington, D.C., and he's going to talk about being in Washington, D.C. in 2019. That's when this was posted. He's going to talk about another time he was in Washington, D.C. in 2017. And then I'm going to show you when he was in Washington, D.C. a third time. And then I think you're going to understand why I don't think it's fair to call the movement in Hong Kong pro-democracy. Let's listen. Good morning, <clears throat> Chairman McGovern, Co-Chairman Rubio, and members of this commission. It's an honor to be invited back to Capitol Hill to speak about developments in Hong Kong. You may recall that I last traveled to Washington more than two years ago and testified before this commission in this same building on May 3rd of 2017. Okay, so he's there in 2019, he's there in 2017. He's dragging the U.S. into the internal political affairs of Hong Kong and China. And... He did it in 2019 and 2017, and this is from 2015. He's in Washington again on invitation by Freedom House, which is a subsidiary of the National Endowment for Democracy, the NED, the organization that the U.S. government uses to fund sedition and interference all around the globe. And as a matter of fact, uh, the NED's website shows the programs that they fund in Hong Kong. And I've documented this since 2014, as a matter of fact. So there's nothing that Joshua Wong is doing that, that he's doing that's pro-democracy. He's being funded and directed by the U.S. government to create a problem in Hong Kong to spite China. That's all he's doing. Um, th there was nothing about representing the people of Hong Kong. They had no program. They had no policies that they were actually talking about to actually improve the day-to-day -day lives of the people of Hong Kong. As a matter of fact, they were blocking roads and, and ruining the economy with their mobs and their violence. They were attacking people who disagreed with them. So there was nothing pro-democracy about what was going on in Hong Kong. And yet, if you read Netowit's most recent opinion piece, he claims that there were. And think about it. It's Joshua Wong in Washington, D.C., and he's appealing to the U.S. government for assistance and backing in his so supposedly pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong. 
Yet this is the U.S. government guilty of the worst crimes against humanity of the 21st century. We're talking about the war in Iraq in 2003 alone, a million dead Iraqis, all predicated on a false pretext, a deliberately false pretext regarding weapons of mass destruction. The U.S. has invaded and destroyed the countries of Libya, Afghanistan. They're illegally occupying eastern Syria, and they are promoting the war in Yemen through their proxies, the Saudis, which is considered by the UN the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today. That's who Joshua Wong was appealing to for help. And that's who people like Netoit and the Belarus opposition are also appealing to for help and working with, as I will show you. So keep that in mind. When we say the U.S. is interfering, we don't mean some benign, benevolent superpower uh, trying to do its best to help, but kind of meddling also at the same time. We're talking about a nation that destroys countries, kills millions of people, shreds civilizations. That's who we're talking about. That's who these people are working with. So please keep that in mind. Now let's go back to this and look at what he's saying about Belarus. This is not the first time that Netwit has talked about Belarus. I covered this in a previous article before I started doing videos. This is him, stand with Belarus, solidarity with Belarus. And he's got a little sign here that he made that says, Thai people stand with Belarusians, free Belarus. He's got the Thai flag. We all recognize that. But what flag is this? Is this the flag of Belarus? No, that's the flag of Belarus. So what's this flag? So five minutes of research and you'll find out that it's the Belarusian Central Council flag. And this was the administrative body that Nazi Germany set up to run Nazi occupied Belarusia, now known as Belarus. And if you can notice, it, it was dissolved the day before Russia liberated Belarusia from Nazi Germany. And so the US backed agitators in Belarus today are rallying around the flag of Nazi collaborators from World War II. We saw that before in Ukraine in 2014. We remember scenes like this, the Western media would show us with all these flags in, in Kiev during these protests, and the Western media never told us what these flags were. But if you looked them up, like this red and black one, for example, that is the flag of the Nazi collaborators in Ukraine during World War II. And now it's the flag for right sector they're, they're a neo-Nazi, they're an armed neo-Nazi paramilitary organization that operate in Ukraine right now, the right sector. So that's the U.S. doing this all over again in Belarus. And here is Netowit uh, eagerly promoting it. He's, eagerly, he's a political science student, by the way. He's 24 years old. I don't know how long he's been studying at Chulalongkorn University, but you would think he would take at least five minutes to look up this flag before he made a sign and took a picture of him holding it on social media. And of course, just as was the case with Hong Kong, look at all these programs that the USNED is funding in Belarus to back the opposition there. So again, we come back to here. This has nothing to do with democracy. This has everything to do with US interference hiding behind democracy. Now let's talk about Netowit himself. Where does he fit into all of this? Is he just naive? Does he just not understand how any of this works? Or is he working with the NED and Western organizations promoting US interference around the globe? Well, this is Netowit at the Oslo Freedom Forum. This is their official YouTube channel. And this is his 2018 talk that he did there. And that he has been detained by the Thai authorities and sent back the next morning to the Hong Kong. So he's complaining because Netowit invited Joshua Wang, the, the US funded agitator who was literally in Washington DC multiple times. Um, he's upset because when Netowit invited him to Thailand, the Thai government said to Joshua Wang, you're not going to stir up trouble here, just go home to Hong Kong. He was never allowed in, in, in the country. So this is Netowit at the Oslo Freedom Forum where have we heard that before? This is an organization that facilitates U.S. political interference around the globe. And we know that because the BBC told us. Let's listen. Invoke the spirit of the 
barricades. But the teaching here is to be successful, to topple a government for good. You have to be organized and to plan meticulously. And activists here have been involved in helping to organize the current protests in Hong Kong. Their plan to put thousands of people on the streets of the territory was in fact hatched nearly two years ago. Okay, so the BBC admits it right there that that's what the Oslo Freedom Forum does. They train agitators, they send them back home to stir up trouble. That's what they did with Hong Kong. And here is Netowit at the Oslo Freedom Forum. So it's no wonder he's he knows Joshua Wong. They are training at the exact same place. Now, has Netowit done any anything that we can link to the US NED here in Thailand? Because of course, <clears throat> The NED funds every core organization involved in the ongoing anti-government protests here in Thailand and all the organizations pushing the anti-monarchy narrative here in Thailand. They're all on this list, including Prachatai, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, and ILaw. And ILaw tried to rewrite the Thai constitution at one point, and they're funded by the U.S. government. So has, has Netowit been involved in any of this NED business? And it turns out, yes, he has been. Here he is. Today, our political science student union will hold a talk by Louisa Grieve about Uyghurs in China and how we can help them. And here we have, this is one, this is his political, his political science union beyond boundaries, situation of the Uyghurs in China and how we can help them with Louisa Grieve, director of external affairs, Uyghur human rights project. It is crucial to understand the modern day Holocaust, how offensive to try to compare what's going on in, in Xianjiang to the Holocaust uh, that the Uyghurs are facing and then hashtag Milk Tea Alliance. So, so you can see how the US government funded events here are all being linked to the Milk Tea Alliance. And of course, who is Louisa Grieve? Am I just imagining that she works for the uh, National Endowment for Democracy? Here she admits she's part of the Uyghur Human Rights Project. And then we just go here, the NED's programs for Xianjiang, which they also refer to as East Turkestan, which is the separatist name for Xianjiang, not recognized by the UN. So this is the US openly promoting separatism here. And right there, Uyghur Human Rights Project, it's funded by the US NED. And as a matter of fact, she used to work directly for the NED. Now she works for an organization funded by the NED. And worse still, here she is, a new book out on the Uyghur crisis in Thai, featuring a forward by me and translations of work by Andrew Nathan and this person, Darren Byler, and of course by the Uyghur Human Rights Project. So was money exchanged or did Netowit and his, and his team just do this out of the kindness of their heart? And I think what this proves without a doubt is that Netowit is working with the NED. Whether he's getting money or not, that remains to be proven with, with actual evidence, but he is definitely working with the NED because first it, was, first it was this event that he hosted and now he's writing books for them. So that's Netowit. That's how the Thai anti-government protests link with Hong Kong and Belarus and also Xianjiang. And you can see what the US is doing and we can see who Netowit is and how he fits into this. And I think it's important to raise awareness of this because he doesn't deserve the credibility that he's been getting from the Western media. And I think the Thai public and the and international audiences should know this about people like Netowit. And he's not the only one. There's all kinds of characters out there like that who are presented as student activists and when they're just foreign agents working to facilitate U.S. interference in yet another country's internal affairs. So for my patrons, I'm putting this up uh, first for you, and then I'm going to try to get Thai subtitles for this. So when it's published publicly, and Thai audiences can get some of this information. I think it's really important to understand. Then to my patrons who make these videos possible, thank you so much. If you're watching this when it's posted publicly, please like and share it. Um, if you subscribe to my channel, it's totally free to do and it helps my channel grow and I greatly appreciate it. 
check the video description for all the links to references that I used for this video. And there's also information there about how you can help support my work, like through Patreon. And with Patreon, not only are you helping support my work month to month, but you're also helping build a community around my work. Because with Patreon, I'm able to interact and talk with and, and discuss issues with my supporters on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I really feel that I learn about as much from them as I hope they're learning from me. And I think that's really great. And I'd like to see many more of you join that community. And to everyone helping in any way, whether you're just sharing my articles and videos, or if you're helping translate or you're doing subtitles, I really couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.